worst interview of the day right here. By far. Terrible. I'm just learning every day. Plus seven and a rebound there. Is this true? They have a last eight rebounds. Oh, Oliveri and now again. Oliveri has tied it up at 89. Oh, he did. There's Oliveri again. Boy, playing with some emotion, too. He f <laughs> forced a turnover. You know, this is like two completely different games, the first half and the second half. Remember this guy right here? Right here, number 41. Homie that took a selfie with LeBron on Lakers Media Day. Y'all remember him? His name is Chris Olivari from Xavier. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't watch a lot of Big East basketball last year. I thought this right here was a creative player. I'm not gonna cap. I apologize, Chris. I wasn't familiar with your game, my brother. My brother in Christ. I didn't know you averaged 19 points last year at Xavier and led the Big East in scoring. I had no earthly idea. I think the Lakers may have found themselves a hidden gem with Chris Olivari. Roll that beautiful bean footage. This is how you make an NBA roster. Look at this guy competing, moving the puppies 94 feet. Rob Palenka, JJ Reddick, pay that man. Pay that man. Hurry up and pay this man before the rest of the league finds out. This shit beautiful, bro. This is the definition of making the most of your opportunity. Just look at this kid hustle. Just look at the energy that he bring into the team. We got to have him on the final roster. Rob Palenka. Don't mess this one up, Rob. He going ISO. He shooting step back threes. He coming off of pin downs. Just look at the toolbox. Just look at the skill set. Chris Olivari. The real question is, how did this type of talent go undrafted? The moral of the story is this. The politics in the NBA is crazy. Game against the Milwaukee Bucks. Enter... Quincy Olivero, who is on an Exhibit 10 contract with the L.A. Lakers. He had 11 points and five rebounds, including three threes in just over nine minutes in the final frame to lift the Lakers to a win. And I think, you know, so often in the preseason, we can get a little bit jaded to the, you know, let's make a judgment on this trade of the summer or let's make a trade just by watching the scrimmage. But this is really what it's all about. Listen to this. You played 147 college games. You've been working at this for a really long time. What's that mean to you? It means it means the world. I really honestly just want to get on the phone, call my dad and cry. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to fight tears now, man, because this this is this is crazy, man. I, I, I just don't know how to describe it, man. I'm just so blessed. I'm so lucky, man. And I'm just grateful. I'm really grateful, man. I mean, how incredible is that? Like, this is the moment. This is when you get the unsung heroes, the guys who see this as their shot. You could just hear how emotional he was being able to contribute to the Los Angeles Lakers, a story <laughs> franchise. And congratulations. That was incredible to watch. Quincy, uh, first, just on the fourth quarter specifically, and you, you know, picking up 94 feet, causing turnovers, hitting threes, and as you're seeing the vets get up, what's going through your mind as you're leading that big comeback? Just keep going. Just keep going. I think I hold my head high on the fact that I'm an energy guy, and I like to make sure that every time I'm in, I give the most positive energy I can. And if I've been sitting the whole game, that means I should be the most rested. So just pick up full and have good energy. And next thing you know, the whole bench is up. And I, I really was focused on just getting this first win for Coach Reddick because we, ha we had been pretty close. And then when we got to like the third quarter or the fourth quarter in the previous two games, it kind of dwindled away. So I just wanted to give everything I could to put us in the best position to win. JJ was just telling us that you have a cross country background. Yes, sir. Talking about kind of the, the amazing shape that you're in and winning all the drills. Can you just take us through that, some of that, and how that coincided with your basketball career and how you've incorporated it? Yes, sir. My father, when I was 12 years old, we started running with a group around Atlanta. It was called Movers and Pacers, and. Around that time, I just noticed that that came easy to me. It was fun because I was able to run around downtown Atlanta, see all the beautiful buildings, but also spend time with my dad. And we would go every Sunday, and it became fun. And next thing you know, it correlated uh, directly with basketball. I was able to run everywhere. My AAU coach, long, uh, may he rest in peace, he, he always said that in order to get a job here in the NBA, I have to be the most in shape. And that was something I took pride in, and I 
up until I was 16, I, I told Coach Cage at Westlake High School that I was going to put focus on basketball full time and stop running cross country. And ever since then, I've just been kind of holding that as my calling card to be the most in shape player on the floor. And that we were just talking to Gabe Vincent. He was undrafted out of school, and, and uh, Dan asked him kind of what it takes. He said it like, takes everything, you know, to make it. Uh, how did having somebody like him and other players on the roster have you started to take some of that and incorporate that into your own kind of mindset? Yes, sir. I think the biggest thing every vet could say if they came in here is that I ask a lot of questions. I ask Gabe a lot of questions, whether that's his time with the Heat, what is it like playing for Coach Spoelstra, what is Jimmy Butler like, what is the Heat culture like, what did it take for him to get to where he's at because. Coach Emery's brother, Coach Brian, would always say, I, I can be just like Gabe Vincent. We're about the same size, and I can do the same thing he does. And he's, he's uh, made a career here. So just always coming in here and asking questions. I mean, I have a lot of knowledge, whether that's LeBron, AD, AR, D-Lo, Gabe Vincent. It's just so much knowledge that can be soaked up that I try my best to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, so I, I don't take what that group did lightly at all. Um, really impressive. I thought, in particular, Quincy just completely changed the game. Um, and I, to me, and I told our guys this after, what he did um, is the blueprint for what we're asking for a, a few of our players in terms of just picking up full court, being disruptive, uh, taking time off the shot clock. Uh, I thought he just executed exactly what we want from someone in his position. And we've challenged a number of guys, and they've done it well to varying degrees um but haven't seen it executed that well uh until tonight with quincy yeah speaking of olivari i, I was sitting right there in the corner so you could see you know, he's picking up full court and every time he's turning somebody over that's what, what's getting lebron off his seat you know just kind of appreciating those things uh, that uh, what else do you know about him obviously he was there in the summer he's on an e10 uh with how what can you tell us about quincy and the kind of the type of player he is um so he's got a background running cross country. So he's in unbelievable shape at all times. Uh, when we did all of our conditioning in September, he won nearly every run. For August and September, when we had our light days uh, and we did our uh, shooting drills, um, he, I think, has the highest score in nearly every shooting drill we have. Um, he takes the game very seriously. He's a player who, I talk about care factor, like he's a player who has a care factor for doing it the right way and wanting uh, to execute whatever vision you give him. Um, I'm excited that he's in our program. I really am. Um, we, we, we look at him uh, as a coaching staff in, in very high regard.